Warning, 30 Screams or Less may contain spoilers about movies that have recently been released. If you haven't seen the movie, go watch it, come back, and enjoy the show. Or, if you don't want to waste your time watching the movie and rather have two random horror dudes watch it for you, we got you covered as well. Welcome everyone to 30 Screams or Less, a horror movie podcast where we review horror movies in 30 minutes or less. Today's movie we're actually going to be talking about is called Savage Land. Written and directed by Phil Guidry, Simon Herbert, and David Whalen. Starring Heather Moore as KGHW news anchor. I think we're just going to refer to her as the anchor. And No Montez as Francisco Salazar. This movie is available for free on YouTube. It's about when a small town near the... Amazon, Mexico. My God, why am I fucking this up? It says Arizona, Steve. Yes, I know. I see that. I don't know where you keep getting Amazon, but proceed. Yeah, I buy too much shit. Okay. Plot is when a small town near the Arizona-Mexico border is wiped out overnight, suspicion falls on the lone survivor. But a roll of photos the survivor took that night tells a different story. 30 Screams or Less starts now. Corey, what did you think of Savage Land? I was researching movies we should watch this week, and I just kept reading about this film, Savage Land, that came out, what, what 2015 it came out. And I've watched the trailer and people were saying it's one of the scariest movies they've ever seen or the best horror movies I've ever seen. Dude, I think they pretty much nailed it. This was such a fantastic movie. I think you maybe feel a little differently about it, but yeah, it was a very long slow burn, but I enjoyed it. It had some fucking terrifying imagery, that's for sure. Yeah. So when you told me that, I was like, one of the scariest horror movies or best horror movies. I'm like, wow, that's a bold ass statement. So I watched it. I personally, like you said, I feel different about it. When I watched it first, I was having a hard time concentrating on what the hell was going on because it was jumping around like crazy between interviews with different people and showing Salazar and the interview. And it was going really fast. So it wasn't even getting to the point just yet until I think it was more toward the middle is when it started getting really good. And that's where I was like really enthralled in the movie and just being like, holy shit, this is is fucking crazy because you started seeing everything unveiled through these series of pictures and so like everyone thought this guy did it thought he wiped out a whole entire town overnight which let's be realistic who the hell can wipe out a whole entire town without any guns because there was no gun oh there was one gun involved dude the whole premise of the movie is this dude's in an interview room because he apparently wiped out an entire small town in one night like you said how can one person do this but the story slowly unfolds. Did you catch the part where one of the detectives or something said that when they found him, he was covered in 15 different types of blood? Yeah, I did. So now they're just like, oh, okay, he is guilty of it because he's covered in everyone's blood. But it's not even that. He was in the thick of it and probably just... Everyone's getting eaten via these photos that we're being shown and blood's probably everywhere, obviously, because it's all black and white. You can't really tell. But I love the way that the photos were because it wasn't so clear that it was like, OK, maybe it's vampires. Maybe it's zombies. Maybe it's demons. We're not sure. I thought it was vampires, though, because if you look at one of them, the teeth had very vampire-esque type teeth. So and that's probably definitely seen, fangs. Yeah, definitely fangs. It actually kind of reminded me of 30 Days of Night. Okay. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, because 30 Days of Night, they had free reign over the, the, that town in Alaska because that's one of those towns where night falls for 30 days or like a whole entire month. And then vampires are literally able to just walk around and have a good time living their best life. But part of me also thinks that maybe it isn't vampires because did this happen overnight or was it throughout the day and night? Because if it was day and night, then I mean, that probably rules out vampires. I mean, we never really know. Like you said, the only glimpse of whatever is doing these things that we get is from these photos. Yeah, exactly. The first photo that Salazar starts talking about 
Because really, it's only the Yanker and Salazar that are kind of just going through this back and forth. Salazar didn't even put up a fight in the courtroom about this whole thing because they needed to paint a picture of someone doing something so heinous. I bet you anything that the whole town or all of these sheriff's police officers, everyone involved knew about this. So they needed a fall guy. And I think Salazar was that fall guy because he was the only survivor. I don't think they knew he did it. I think they just needed someone to take the blame and sweep this under the rug. 100% because the fact that he, when he was in court, they made a point to say that he didn't say a single word while they were in court. He didn't try and defend himself once. So some kind of cover up. Oh, absolutely. He knew he was fucked. Everyone was against him. Cops, everything guaranteed were against them. You saw all these people that were being interviewed. They were like, he did it. He absolutely did it. He's from Mexico and all this stuff. And it had racial undertones to the whole thing. So they really wanted wanted to just picture someone who's like an illegal immigrant committing these heinous acts and being able to rid history of them to not let that secret out with whatever they are. So that's why I think that this whole thing was just a ploy to sweep all that under the rug. Absolutely. I, Especially where they were doing interviews with very racist people towards yeah. the end of the movie. Oh my you know, God. A bunch, yeah. of, a bunch of Trump supporters. A bunch of mouth breathers. Yeah. Yeah. I was watching those interviews. I'm like, oh my God. I've seen people like this in real life and it sucks. Yeah. Just, we lived it. Yeah. Yeah. We have. We did. I just can't stand people that have those kind of like ideologies like everyone is bad that's not american or white or whatever it's so dumb it's yeah unbelievably dumb i'm tired of it honestly dude did you see this whole um basically a reversed affirmative action today no what happened just what i said they reversed affirmative action so colleges can now deny students based on their race oh that's not cool yeah, that Supreme, is not the cool. Supreme at all. Court overturned it. None of this makes sense. We're not. I'm okay. I'm not trying to get into a political podcast here, but holy shit, this is absurd. None of this stuff needs to happen anymore. It shouldn't even be a thing. That shouldn't even be a law. It shouldn't yeah. be anything. Like affirmative action should not even be a thing because it should just be. People right. should just be able to live their lives. They should be able to go to school. They should be able to do these things. Why is everyone so controlled? It's stupid. I agree, dude. It's it's kind of. I don't want to live here anymore. You know what I mean? I know exactly. Like, I don't want to be on Earth anymore. Yeah. So it really sucks. You know what? Send me to Mars. I'm sure like my girlfriend will come with me. He can bring Joanne with you. We'll go up to Mars. We'll fucking hang out in their colony, whatever. It would be good. Yeah, we could do that. Too bad we didn't know that we could have lived at the bottom of the ocean in that Titanic thing, too. Oh, that too. Yeah. I mean, because I heard about that. I'm on their newsletter. They were like, hey, we're looking for someone. I was like, oh, I'm in the middle of a move. I don't know. Okay, not quite. <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> you had me there. Can you imagine if they just had a newsletter? They're just like sending out feelers to people. Hey, we saw that you might be interested in living in Atlantis. We, we have this experimental submarine thing that we want to go down to the bottom of the ocean and look at the Titanic wreckage with. We're not sure if it's going to work, but do you want to go anyway? Yeah, we built it completely out of recycled materials, Coke bottles mostly. They're going to recycle the pieces they brought back up, actually, they make the next one. Probably, of course. To send, another, to send another bunch of dumb fucking billionaires to the bottom of the ocean. Oh, my God. Yeah, we fucked up this time, but we got it now. Now we know what to do. <laughs> yeah. God, this world's crazy sometimes. And yeah, when you watch this movie, it does paint that picture of a world that's so against illegal immigrants and using them just because they can. It's like a, one of the strong undertones of this movie. And it's unfortunate. It really is unfortunate. But he accepted his fate. He's like, you know what? It's safer to be in here than it is to be out there. And that's actually a line that he said while he was doing the interview with that anchor. He said, I'm in here. They can't get me. Exactly. They can't get him. So not only can those demons or whatever get him, he's already fucking done. He's gone through the courts and everything. He doesn't have to deal with them anymore. Technically, he has his meals. He freaking lives out his days and then he gets put to death, unfortunately. But it's sad. This kind of thing does happen. Not to that extent, but it does happen. So it's another, like I think, evidence to you saying that these were vampires was they were finding skeletons. Like people were completely demolished to the bone. Yeah, and vampires, they will just drain humans like crazy from what I get. From like every vampire movie I've seen, that's basically what happens is that they just fucking drain people of blood. And yeah. you know what? I haven't seen a lot of good vampire movies. Have you? Renfield. Yeah, Renfield was great. That, but 
other than that, they all tend to be like very, oh, hey, you know, I want to suck your blood or Twilight or whatever. Yeah. Hotel Transylvania was pretty good. Oh, that's a fun one. Yeah, yeah. all three yeah. of them. I actually didn't see the third one. I saw the first two, but they were they fun. Reca- they recast Adam Sandler. Oh, what's not Dracula fuck? in the third one. What? No wonder why I'm not going to watch it. Yeah. No Adam was- Sandler, no care. Yeah, fuck that. I'm out. Only one of the greatest talents of our generation. Yep, I quote Billy Madison and Happy Gilmore almost on a daily basis. Did I ever tell you that Adam Sandler was our guest speaker at my high school graduation? Really? What did he just do? I can do it. I don't remember. That wow. was a while ago, dude. That's what he just says up there? Yeah, he just does Ooh, fucking, wow. he just does Toll Booth Billy impressions. Yeah. Yeah. Dollar 25. <laughs> <laughs> I don't oh. honestly don't remember what he said. No, I think that's just one of the, those moments where you're like, just want to get it over with so you can finish high school. And then you're like, cool, I'm going to go out drinking with my friends. Yeah, and I mean, I'm only like 18, but I'm doing it. Yeah, exactly. I think that's pretty much what I did. I just hung out with my friends and then we uh, had some drinks. Nice. Yeah. So that's the way to go. That's so that was like 40 years ago, right? 150. Oh, are you a vampire? <laughs> yeah. You should see these things. I have to file them down all the time. Yeah. What, your teeth? Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah, I know. So what do you uh, what do you think about this movie here with that promo or whatever? I just called it a promo, like a fucking wrestling promo, but the don't judge me thing that was playing in the background as those images were floating across the screen and you hear yeah. someone talking. The don't judge me. Actually, I need a refresher then on the don't judge me because half the time I was focusing more on the photos and trying to see what was in them because they were very faint sometimes. And you're like, what the fuck is that? And you can make out a human body. But yeah, elaborate on what you mean by that. No, there was just this part in the movie where they were showing images of the photos and maybe like the camera going through the town. I just typed in the internet to try and find out what he was saying and uh, Savage Garden lyrics came up. So apparently I'm not going to tell you. A chicka cherry cola, right? Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I loved that whole process of just photo by photo by photo throughout the movie. And I think that's what actually kept me sucked in because at the beginning I was not having it there was too much going on i couldn't focus i was like okay i can't note anything because it's fucking it's crazy and then that's when it started getting really good and i thought up until close to the end it kind of lost me though when they started interviewing those mouth breathers but there was that very very end part that i thought was really cool with the found footage do you remember that no no okay because at the very end they were talking about how these similar types of murders are happening throughout the west coast it's kind of working its way up and they somehow were able to get footage from a broken camera of these people getting attacked by these demons and it actually turns out it was daylight now that i think about it it was daylight so maybe not vampires maybe just demons or some sort of weird zombie thing i don't know but it was very cool because it was very chaotic it actually reminded me a lot of outlands outlands I was just about to say, it reminded me about that. Now that you're describing this, I remember watching it thinking, this is Outwaters. Outwaters. That's it. These are like memory cards. Exactly. Yeah. It does have a similarity to Outwaters. Not as fucked up, but the thing about this movie is it's shot kind of like a documentary. It's not real. It's a mockumentary, a fomentary, like we've said before, fomentary. So it's shot like that. It's very fucking believable. And if... You didn't know it was a horror movie. Like if someone just threw it on and someone maybe walked in the house and this was on, they'd be like, what the fuck happened here? And they would probably start looking up the name of the town in Arizona. It's very well shot. It's very convincing. I think that aspect is great. The other found footage movie we reviewed on this. That was not, the other not movie. Outwaters. There was a one with the little girl that traveled. Oh, yeah, yeah. That's oh, what's the name of that one? That was um Australia. Shit. Hold on. I got it. I got it. Let's see. I'm going to just go to YouTube. I'm already on the podcast. You're fucking way faster. Bye. Doing it the hard way. Lake Mungo. Yes, Lake Mungo. So it does have similarities to it. Lake Mungo was also hyper-realistic. They're both great in their own right, but Lake Mungo is about the disappearance of a girl. This one is more about just complete insanity. And speaking of insanity, I loved what they were saying for 
how some of the people died. So there was like a family that climbed up one of those water towers, right? And jumped off. Yeah. And they just jumped off and all died. And they're saying that Salazar scared them that bad that they all just plummeted to their death, which come on, let's be realistic. The one person could just look up at them and go, I'm going to get you. And they're all like, you know what? Well, we're just all going to jump to our deaths instead. So not only that, but then they, um, I believe it was one of those memory card things where they went through a preschool and there were fucking nine preschooler kids that just got butchered. Oh, yeah. That part was creepy. Yeah, that that was rough because they showed bodies. Yes, they did. (laughs) They weren't fucking around in this one. They made it look very violent. And then there was that one part where the girl is behind these bars at her school trying to get out and you see like these demons coming from behind her. And this is where he takes most of the photos of this whole ordeal is this one girl and he's focused so much on her, which by the way, I thought was a little weird that he's just taking photos throughout this whole time. But I guess when they were interviewing a photographer in the movie, he was saying that, hey, sometimes photographers have one job and that's what they got to do. It's just they got to record these moments. And I mean, that's what he did. Salazar recorded those moments. But I feel like I would be like, "Ah, you know what? I'm just going to kind of run for my life and not worry about taking photos. So the thing thing about that, though, is they totally use him taking photos of everything against him in court. You know, that was another thing they used just to try and bury this guy. Exactly. Yeah, they were trying to say, oh, yeah, the whole thing's photoshopped and all this. And it's like, okay, yeah, sure, you can photoshop them. But uh, that's a lot to photoshop. And it's very imaginative. That's too much work for one night. Forget it. I don't know anyone that's that good in Photoshop that can actually take that many photos and doctor them up in that little time. You know what else I really loved was when they showed Salazar, when he showed him in the holding cell, the camera was aiming directly through the window and the door. That's like the only time that you could see him. Yeah, I noticed that. It felt like he wasn't allowed to be filmed. So the anchor probably just had a mic in there and they shot him from afar. It was cool, though, because it was like standard definition, too. So it almost was extra found footagey. So did, word? did they yeah. say why he didn't speak in court? Because he said several words when he was in the holding cell. Yeah, I think he just knew that he didn't stand a chance and he didn't want to be out there because those things were out there. He was probably just terrified. He knew he was safe there. So he's like, you know. Fuck it. I'm just staying here. But we don't 100% know that because he didn't say anything. His friggin' lawyer was one of those lawyers you get. Uh, what are they called? Public defender. Yep. His lawyer was a public defender and he's only got three cases under his belt. So he knew he was already fucked to begin with. So you just let him you know, do his thing. He didn't say anything. He just fucking went on with his day and then found guilty for something that they really have no proof he even did. Yep. Did they, I don't remember, did they show him being executed? No, they showed a cartoon of the situation where it was like truth or lies or whatever, something like that. It was weird. It was one of those like satire type cartoons of that situation. But nope, they didn't show it. They just alluded to him being dead. And of course, there was that one guy. You know what? There's this one guy in this whole movie that just pissed me off the whole time. It was like the radio jockey or whatever who's talking about America the whole time. Oh, yeah. Oh, God. I'm listening. I showed him in the studio a couple times. Yep. Just like, America. This is a dirt, dirt, dirt. You just (laughs) just turn into a South Park character. I love it. (laughs) Yeah. That's who that radio personality was. It's like, America. You know, so that that guy drove me nuts. It makes sense, though, because everybody in the town was like that. Like, you learn that later on in the movie. Oh, yeah. They basically all have the same fucking stupid viewpoint. Yeah, they all have that same fucking stupid viewpoint. And he was a good guy, clearly. He would always help people. He was always volunteering at the school and helping people at the church and all these things. And at the end, they still painted him as the bad guy because he probably wasn't white. And that's pretty much, I think, one of the big outliers of this story is that he wasn't white, so he's guilty. Yep. That was the, that was actually the concept. Yeah. It took me a minute. Like uh, after the movie ended, I thought about it for a little bit. And I also came to that same conclusion because I really wasn't thinking about it that way when I watched it. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they were definitely trying to just pin it on this guy. Oh, Because they, they didn't know what the hell was killing people. Or they knew what the hell was killing people. Like maybe this is something that comes around every hundred years or something. And they knew. 
but they just fucking let this guy be the fall guy. But well, we don't know. We don't he know. Definitely, they, he definitely like showed signs of being a little wacky when they were showing those, you know, camera angles through the prison door when he would stare at the camera and you'd have like those fucking undertaker eyes where he'd roll them in the back of his head. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. He just let that like, blank stare. Yeah. But who knows? So another thing is that even though they had this guy executed, all those murders are probably still going to be going on. Oh, absolutely. And that's when they start traveling throughout the West Coast. And they're saying it's like a sequel. Oh, you want a sequel, a a sequel mockumentary? That would be interesting because there have been some found footage movies that have multiple sequels to them. So maybe. Uh, I mean, it's been, what, seven years at this point? It's possible. Still like not too late in the game. Yeah, I'm curious if there was ever, I'm going to Google it, but a sequel and they could explore like, especially the investigators and stuff. That yeah, the maybe, guy they executed was for no reason. Yeah, maybe they'll do a sequel. They'll cast what's his face from Split, and there we go. We're good. Can we stop? Just just stop putting James McAvoy in everything. It's like you're like Melissa McCarthy. You know what I mean? It's the same idea. They get typecast. They really do. They just put in fucking everything. Let's get Adam Sandler in the sequel. Ah, right, there we go. He yeah, could be the boy. he could be the he could be Dracula. Maybe that's what it is. Dracula's little minions are out killing people in small towns in Mexico or whatever. Yeah, he, yeah, or he, Amazon, he, as you would say. As the Amazon. Yeah. If they only knew how much I fucked up that beginning, it's it'd be absurd. They'd just be like, why can't you get that right, Steve? It's in front of you. I don't know. Maybe I'm, I just read shit I want to read. Well, they know now because they've heard the beginning of this podcast. That's getting cut. Edit. No, I do not cut that. Or that's the blooper. I'll take that as the blooper. All right. You do what you want with your editing magic. Just make sure that's in the final version somehow. I'll make sure it sounds good. For All right. <laughs> yeah. So our boy, Adam Sandler, maybe put him in the sequel. Why not? Yeah, we'll co- I'll contact him. He's from the town I live in. So exactly. He's got a booth at what's it called? Red Arrow. Does he? I think so. I know he goes to Puritan a lot when he's in town because I think his mother still lives here. Plus, he has family in town still. Not to mention Puritan's fucking awesome. Yeah. What? You don't like their tenders? No, Puritan's awesome. I just don't think the tenders are all they're hyped up to be. Weren't they the inventors of the tenders? That is the lore. Yes, that the, the lore. The chicken tender was invented in New Hampshire. Yep, which is possible. It's absolutely possible, but it's a stretch. It's a big stretch. I feel like if you're going to invent something, it's got to be absolutely absurd rather than pieces of chicken deep fried. Yeah, but then they deep fried them in coconut. I actually do enjoy those, the coconut ones. Coconut? Yeah. What yeah, buddy. Hell? Yeah. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> coconut breaded chicken tenders. All set. I no. I am not a fan of coconut. You say that now. These will turn you around, buddy. Mm, I don't know. Coconut and bananas. No, thanks. What? Yep. Bananas? Can't do bananas. Why? It makes me sick. Just like the texture or what? It's literally the texture, the smell, and the taste. Well, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't like it. I think it's all stemmed from when I was, oh, it was like, I was younger. I had a banana and I like, it made me sick. And you know, when you have something to eat and you get sick and then you throw up or something, I think that's what happened. You mean like you smell it and you get nauseous? That too. Yes. So that's me with fireball whiskey and tequila. No shit. I smell those things and whatever I had for lunch that day is gone. No shit. Did you drink them both at once? Or is that just a freaking crazy night with Corey? It's two separate occasions with those particular beverages. No shit. And well, that's why you stick with beer. Yeah. You know, so it's hopefully beer doesn't get you sick. Or whiskey. Or whiskey. Oh, Which God. I'm enjoying right now. Yeah. What kind of whiskey? Eagle Rare 10. Eagle Rare 10. 2010? No, like it sat in a barrel for 10 years before they sold it. Oh, okay. So that'd be 2013. Mm-hmm. That's sick. Dude, I meant to ask you, the liquor stores in Florida have some, apparently some really nice selections of bourbons and whiskeys. All right. Well, if there are any you're interested in, let me know. You can Venmo me and I'll friggin' send them up your way. Yeah, you can put them in the same box with my Terrifier vinyl. Exactly. It's sitting right in front of me, actually, ready to be shipped. Perfect. Yeah. Well, not ready. I got to put it in a box and then ship it. Word. Yep. So we'll talk about a little Venmo action later. Yep. Sounds good. But Corey... What do you give Savage Land? I actually gave Savage Land three out of five dead kids. I probably would have given it a four, but I feel like there was no actual like payoff to the story. There was no conclusion, if you will. Otherwise, I loved it. The guy that played Salazar played a serial killer perfectly. Like I said before, the way he looked at the camera, the fact that he didn't really speak. I, I love that. 
my biggest complaint was it's extremely slow and it was kind of boring at times. I can agree with that 100% because I too actually gave it three out of five non-dead kids. So yeah, the blank stare, I thought that was really cool. That's often a thing with serial killers is that they have just kind of this blank stare, dead eye stare, but a lot of them just have that fucking laser focused stare. And that's what he had in this. And I thought that was really cool. It was sporadic at the beginning. Like I was kind of saying, it was very like cut, 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 cut between interviews. And then in the middle is where I was actually sucked in. The end is when you had a lot of your interviews with the people of like America, that kind of deal. And you're right. Zero payoff other than seeing that cool found footage from a video camera and maybe seeing a little bit of the carnage that's happening. But yeah, zero payoff, no one wins, no one loses, it just is. So three out of five in my book, I think it was mid, it was okay. Yeah, it was very mid. I don't understand the hype behind it, I guess you could say. Now, let's say this, do you think if you just somehow stumbled across this without hearing about it from anyone that you would feel differently? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Okay, because sometimes hype can really alter opinion on something. For instance, when you told me people were saying this is like one of the best horror movies ever and all this, I was like, oh, okay, now there's like high expectations in play. So when I watched it, I was like, what the hell? This is, I'm like bored. I was very bored for a lot of it. I even fell asleep at the end of it. It was either maybe I was tired or I forgot I even was watching a movie. It just dragged a lot. It did drag a lot. So documentaries for me, I have to really be in the mood for them, I think, because there's so much dialogue that sometimes it puts me to sleep. And I think that's probably just what happened. There's just so much talk and so much dialogue. And I started freaking getting a little loopy at the end and then passed out. And I woke up into another found footage movie. And I was just like, this is not the same movie, is it? Nope. Nope. I was halfway into another one. Apparently I fell asleep, fell asleep for like an hour. Play? Yeah, it just auto played. Nice. Yeah, I was able to watch it on Tubi. What, this movie? Yeah, so you can watch it on Tubi, you can watch it on YouTube, things like that. It's free, both of them. It's nice. So if you're interested in watching a documentary-style movie that's hyper-realistic, but not all that great, check it out. You would have to sit and watch it, though. It's not something that you can just have on in the background and be like, oh, yeah, I got the gist of it. No, not quite. This isn't the office hanging out in the background where you can have a good laugh in 30 minutes. You have to just actually sit there and listen to kind of everything that's happening. Yeah, definitely. Or you will be lost. Yeah, I got lost at one part. I think I looked away and I was like, what the fuck's happening? What did they talk about? You have to really just kind of sit there and focus on this thing. So sit down, watch it, focus and maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. Or maybe you'll think it's mid. Yeah. So you won't hate it, and you won't like it. It'll just be mid. Just mid. And that's how we felt. Three out of five for the both of us. We felt mid about it. All right, everyone. With that in mind, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Leave us a five-star review on all podcast platforms so we can get some more exposure. And of course, be sure to tell your friends. We're also a part of the Shining Wizards Network. Visit ShiningWizardsNetwork.com. They got a lot of awesome podcasts up there ranging from wrestling to heavy metal to horror, things like that. So definitely check out their network. Very cool stuff. They're awesome dudes. We're glad to be a part of it. Also, visit 30screamsofless.com for all previous episodes and transcripts that go with those episodes. And if there's anything you want us to review, send an email to 30screamsofless at gmail.com or hit us up on social media. Use that hashtag, hashtag 30screamsofless, and join in on the conversation. We also have a t-shirt that's being designed. It's slowly but surely coming along, but it's looking badass. What do you think, Corey? Oh, dude, I can't wait. I've showed it to some people. I'm not going to lie. I've definitely showed it to some people. And um, we'll see if these people actually come through because they said they're going to buy them. So, yeah. What's the general consensus so far? Oh, they love it. They love what Mr. Greg is making. Mr. Greg. OK. Yeah, he does some great stuff. So I'm looking forward to it. Should be out in the next five years. Five years. <laughs> hopefully this year. Yeah. Hopefully this year. I'm sure soon enough. Hopefully but... it doesn't take as long as a summon record does. No, no, it might. <laughs> oh, great. We'll be canceled before then. then. Yeah, I figured we will be. But all right, everyone. With that said, I'm Steve. And I'm Corey. And thanks for listening to 30 Screams or Less. And don't forget to drink your beans and shave your balls with fresh squeezed mammal sauce.
It's written and directed by Phil Guidry, Simon Herd, Simon Herbert, and David. Let me try that again because I just hit my freaking uh, box cutter. Let's try this again. Sorry, right. blood. Yep, blood everywhere, squirting everywhere, squirting blood out of your cock. <laughs> oh, that again. <laughs> this next song is called "I Come." That's what. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Don't edit that. I'm, I won't. I won't. <laughs>